Read what the word said. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thy own eye. Now, in order to be able to help your brother, you need to get whatever that's blocking you, get that out of your eye first. So that's why I'm telling you, he's not telling you not to judge. He's not telling you not to examine. He's not telling you not to look for the speck in your brother's eye. But he's just saying you need to get it yourself right first. Right. Then you can help somebody. Right. Only the strong can bear the infirmity of the weak. Two weak people can't help each other. Yeah. Read what he said. And then shall I see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's You will be able then to help your brother. Right. Read it. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. See, there it is. That's what I'm telling you. He's not telling you not to examine people. And not to detest them and, and uh, determine what they are. He said, because well, he started talking about the good tree. The Bible said, me and a stylish tree. And, and what we produce and what we do is our fruit. Amen. So he said, if you're a good tree, you're going to bring forth good fruit. Amen. Read what he said. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And a tree that is diseased and not able to produce good fruit, it's going to bring forth corrupt fruit. Read it. For every tree is known by his own fruit. So we can look at what you do, what you say, how you act. Nobody's judging you by looking at what you do and what you say. Because the first time, I hear people say it all the time, you judging me, you judging me, I'm not judging you. I saw you steal the stuff in the store, you shoplifted. That's not judging you, I saw you do it. I had a co-worker did that, a pack of big ink pens back in the 70s. Put them down in the cowboy booth in Appleson. And he walked around in the store. You know, they don't bother you until you go out the store. He thought he got away with that. They paid for the other stuff and walking out the door, and here come the manager, system manager, this back in the 70s, so y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, they did. Now. They said, sir, we need you to come back into the store. And he started protesting. Well, what, what you talking about? I need to come. He started making a scene. If, oh, if he just should have walked on back in that wood. He said, well, I'm not coming back in there. Y'all should have said something to me when I was in there. Yo, uh-uh. They drug him back in there. <laughs> Cowboy boots and all. They were dragging him down the aisle. The reason I know the whole story. Oh, she called me. <laughs> he said, call my uncle and tell him to come get me out of jail. And he tried to tell me his side. I called the store. And they told me their side. And their side sound better. It had a better ring to it to me. Y'all not in here with me. So you're not condemning folk when they are guilty or something. But when you see somebody picture in the paper and they've been accused of something, and you say, oh, I knew that. I just knew that they were crooked. I didn't. That's the type of judging he's talking about. Judge none. You jump into a conclusion. They're guilty in your eyes already. You don't even know the details. You just saw that picture in the paper. So he says, judge not unless you be judged. Condemn not unless you be condemned. That's what he's talking about. He's not telling you not to examine for you better look at them and see everything they're doing. Because they'll come in your house and walk out with stuff. Amen. Am I telling the truth or am I not telling the truth? Amen. You better watch some folk that come in your house and they end up down there on his chalice. Come on, I'm almost through. Read what he said. For thorns men do not gather feeds. You do not go to a bush that has nothing but thorns on it and think you're going to get some feeds. When a person is a certain way, there's no need of you going to them thinking that you're going to get some good fruit out of them when all that they are showing you is thorns. Everything they do is hurting you. Everything they do is piercing you. Everything that they're doing is punishing you. Their life is calling you misery. You're trying to get some figs. But you're getting thorns. You get injured. Every time you turn around. But he says you got to love them. Read what the word says. Nor of a bramble bush gather thy grace. We call them sticker bushes back in the day. You go to the grapevine, it should be in a sticker. Nothing sharp. Piercing you. 
You just didn't get that punk juicy grape. Right. And you being pierced every time. Right. Trying to get some grape out of something that's full of scriptures. Right. Read what he says. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart. Here it come. Watch this now. It depends on in your heart mm -hmm. how you examine a person. Right. Out of the good treasures. Right. Out of the things that you have stored up in your life. Out of your life experiences. See, the reason a lot of people are, 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 are bitter is because they, they had a bitter life. Right. And you just came along when that straw broke the camel back. Right. They're really not upset with you, but they're upset with everything that came before you. Right. And it's being taken out on you. Amen. So out of the good, he says, out of the, a good man, out of the, is it abundance? A good treasure of his heart. He said, he bringing forth what? That which is good. And what? And an evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, bringing forth that which is evil. Now watch this. This is the kicker right here. For what? For the abundance of the heart. Stop. It's not just out of the heart, but it's out of what is the abundance that you have, the thing that you have the most of in your heart. Now stay right there for a second. It's out of the thing that you have stored up the most in your heart. What is it called? His mouth speaks. That's what causes you to say what you say. Yeah. It's not what they did to you. It's stuff that's in you. Yeah. Your mouth cannot speak that other than what's in the abundance of your heart. Yeah. If his love is in the abundance of your heart, you'll be able to speak. Yeah. To this day, my cousin has not spoke, spoke anything evil to, about that young man. He just said, the one thing he said, he said, I just don't understand why he didn't come and take care of that after I gave him an opportunity. Y'all not in here with me. Out of the abundance of his heart. He didn't have malice in his heart toward the young man. But the young man would, would, would have hurt him if he hadn't done what he said. Right. Amen. And when we say things, and then you come back and say, I didn't mean to say that. Yes, you did. I, I just really didn't mean to say that. My grandfather used to say, whatever in you, oh, come out. They, they wrote a song about it. Everything when you gotta come. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that in church. Everything when you gotta come. Everything when you gotta come. You know, they have two or three words, they just raise them all they want. <laughs> then when they get into the reframe and the part where they kept going, come on. Come on. If a brother Stacy come on with a director, come, 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 into your congregation and the Bible said his clothing is gay which it means that it's really nice and he dressed up. He said come on up here you come sit way up here. Then he said another man come in with rags. He said you come sit over here and be my foot student. You're violating the law of love. Come on put your hands together. I refuse to judge a man in a corner the Bible says God does not look at the outward appearance, but he looks at our heart. And he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. And if he's kind to the unthankful and the evil, how much better will he do his children with every eye closed? Father, we thank you today. We're going to continue to examine and test, scrutinize men, for we shall know them by their fruit. And their fruit, if it's good fruit, it's a good tree. He said, but if the fruit is corrupt, the tree is corrupt. For a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt, nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good. So I speak into your life right now that you have the strength to love your enemy. To not love your neighbor as yourself, but you still have to love your enemy. Do good to them. And curse them not, but bless them 
and pray for them that despitefully use you. So we thank you today. Come on, as we put our hands together. Whatever you want, man, come forward. I want you to see the Lord into our life. Come on, we're going to give you a few seconds. You may not want to unite, but you want to give your life to God. Why don't you come and we'll lead you to Him. And you can unite at your church of your choice, but you may want to give your life to Him. You say, Pastor, I, I've had some bitterness in my life. I've had some things in my life that I'm now defiled because I can't shake it. In my mind, I can't shake it. You just don't know how hard it is. But I'm here to tell you, nothing is too hard for God. Now that maybe we want to unite with us, it's your opportunity. 